Hey, it's Mr. K doing another video for AP Physics C Mechanics. Still talking about some kinematics, some derivations in this case. Um, so let's go ahead and do another derivation. We have so far that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time of an object. And right now we're assuming constant acceleration. Uh, we also know that if we have an average velocity that is equal to a change of position over a change of time all right so rearrange that if you want to the uh, average velocity times the time is equal to a change of position we're working with one dimension right now um, if you wanted to work with two dimensions you could but just split it up make sure you do one dimension at a time <clears throat> and so um, what else could we do with this. And so one other thing that we can do is we can look at what, what it is to have average velocity. All right. So how do you find an average? That's, that's, well, you do it with your grades all the time, don't you? You add up all the individuals and you divide by the number of things that you added up. And so to find the average here, assuming that we're going to assume constant accelerations, if we wanted to find the average, we would do the initial plus the final velocity. And there are two things there, so we're just going to divide that by two. And that's your average velocity. So we're, going to, we're just going to take that, and we're going to plug it in right, right there, right in there. So I've got average velocity is initial velocity plus final velocity. And that's divided by time on the bottom. Actually, not time, two on the bottom. And that's multiplied by time. That is equal to a change of position. And you're like, all right, so great. What, what, what good is that? Um, well, let's, let's see what else we can do with that. <clears throat> this time, we can distribute it through. So I've got initial velocity times time. Um, that's divided by 2, but we also have this other one that's in final velocity times time. That's also divided by 2. Um, let's keep that, let, let's, let's actually do that individually. Divided by 2 and divided by 2, and that equals a change of position. Uh, well, what else could we do there? It's kind of, you know, kind of funny. But we do have another equation. We have, we have this, this simple final velocity is equal to that stuff equation. Let's put that right here. You know, let's draw a line showing you where I'm going to put it. Right there. I always hate whenever teachers do all the work and you have no idea where things popped into. So yeah, we're going to take that equation. We're going to pop it in right there for final velocity. So let's use that purple. That's kind of nice. So initial velocity times time divided by 2 plus final velocity is um, initial velocity plus acceleration times time and that's times time again all that divided by 2 is equal to the change of position well we're getting mathy um, I promise there's a point I hate getting mathy but there's a point let's do the distributing and we have initial velocity times the time plus acceleration times the time squared it. All that divided by 2. I don't know why I didn't just keep it there. Everything divided by 2, but I don't know. Um, hmm. Well, that's interesting. Well, let's just divide that by 2. Let's put the 2 over here. Let's separate it again. That's why I think I did it. Um, <clears throat> Hey, that's the same thing. What happens if you add a half and a half? You get a whole. We get initial velocity times time, the whole, plus one half acceleration times time squared. And this is another kinematic formula that we're going to use a heck of a lot. <clears throat> so, ta-da! Um, and here's how we're going to use it. So if something is accelerating and it starts off with an initial velocity, like the ball, 
here we are. If something is accelerating, but it starts off with an initial velocity. So here it is. Let's say we, it's falling, but let me start it from above the screen. So there it is. So it started off with an initial velocity already. It hit the top of the frame, already moving. Um, could you figure out how far it moves during that, that space? That's what this is for. So you could say, hey, it, it, what if it's not moving initially? Then that's, that's zero. <clears throat> but, you know, what if it was already moving? And so let me, let me prove to you how, how this works. Let's go back and let's graph it out. I like the purple, but I'm going to choose a more of a maroon. You Aggies out there. Cult following. <laughs> Let's draw that. So <clears throat> here's, how, here's how it's going to be useful with graphing. Graphing is going to be extremely useful in this class. Um, some, if you hate it, <clears throat> that probably means that you just suck at it. So practice. <laughs> uh, I, I used to suck at graphing too, but you, you just got to practice at it. Keep on drawing stuff. So let's do a velocity um, time graph. And if we're going to match up with this kind of situation here where something's already moving um, <clears throat> let's already give this some velocity and it's accelerating so let's just say that it does this and so <clears throat> we're just going to graph out the motion the velocity of it for this time period All right and here's here's what's what what should make it click All right Here's the math, fantastic, we did der derivation. Here's other type of math, but more visual math, all right? And so there are certain things on the graph that we should be able to look at. Um, not, not just the values that are on the graph, not just what it looks like, in this case, uh, kind of a linear increasing graph, um, but also things like, well, the, the slope, we just said linear, right? It, it increases the value at a, at, a, at a constant rate. So it's a constant linear slope. What is slope? Slope is a rise over run. In this case, the slope is a rise, a change in velocity over the run, the change in time. What's that? That's the acceleration. So if we were drawing a graph for a ball that is falling, the slope should be about 9.8 or 10, if we had numbers. Okay. <clears throat> There's another thing that we can look at. And this is something that you might not have looked at before unless you had physics 1 in the past. Um, if you remember, hopefully you remember. But in math classes, they really don't talk about it too much. You can look at the area. And what I mean by that is that we have the area of this shape. Well, if we were to find the average of this line, the average would be right here, right? No, 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 the average. Um, <clears throat> the shape that we would be looking at would be a rectangle. And it would have height, average velocity, and it would have length, time. Well, how do, you, how do you find area? For that shape, the area would be the base times the height, or the height times the base. And so we would have average velocity times the change in time. Well, what the heck is that? You go for an average velocity, you go for a time, that's going to give you a change of position. Turns out the area on this graph is how far you went. Okay? And keep that in mind. The area on this graph is how far you went. On other graphs, the area is going to have meaning. On other graphs, the, the slope will have meaning. On some graphs, it's not going to have any meaning at all. Um, but <clears throat> here, here it definitely does. So the area on this graph is how far you went. Let's make this work. That original shape, this lopsided thing with the, the well, it's, a, it's a triangle on top of a rectangle right let's, let's do that way so we got a triangle on top of a rectangle down there we got two shapes there 
can we find the area of that whole shape that whole shape yeah we can in fact the rectangle has a height that is the initial velocity of our object for this for this fall so <clears throat> initial velocity it's one side of the rectangle it's the other side that's time change in time okay we got we got the rectangle that's not the full area though what's the full area we got to add to it We've got a triangle on top how do you find the area of a triangle you well, you find the base times the height, then you cut that in half because the triangle is just half of a rectangle. Cut it along the diagonal, right? So, let's take that. Let's take the base and the height. The height, what is the height? The height is... Uh, the height is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. That's the height. What's the length? That's time. We've got to cut that sucker in half, don't we? Divided by two. Hmm. Well, that's 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 pretty good. But we can do a little bit better. What was the final velocity minus the initial? What is that? Final velocity minus initial. That's change in velocity, isn't it? Up top, that's change in velocity. Right there, change in velocity times time divided by two. Initial velocity. Gosh, that's that's <clears throat> that's something. How do you find change in velocity? Go back to your original definitions. What changes velocity? That's acceleration. A change in velocity is equal to an acceleration for a time. And we've used that before. Let's put that in. Let's put that in right there. And if we do so, initial velocity times time, that's what we had in the first place. That's that rectangle on the bottom. We're going to add to it the acceleration times time. But there's a time there already, isn't there? Time squared divided by 2. And that should equal how far you went. And I want you to notice that we got here using math, but it's the understanding of the graph and how to use it, right? This is <clears throat> another kinematic formula. And there, there's another one, there's three out there that we're going to use consistently, um, where you plug the first one into the, this one, and um, you get the other one. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that later. But I just want you to see and understand, and I want you to watch this again if you don't get it that using definitions we got here using understanding of what the heck a graph is we got to the same spot and you're gonna have to know both ways all right because you need to understand where we get these equations from sometimes these equations are going to be very basic fundamental laws of nature law you know laws of physics that we use um, other times we're going to use definitions that, to get there um, but it should be Rather, it, it shouldn't just be math to you, and that, that's what that's what I try to try to make sure that you uh, understand. It's not just math, um, <clears throat> because when you really look at it, it's it's speaking the language of physics. All right, and that's what math is. All right, stop it there.